same thing. I can go back to that first clip and you can copy two clips forward with this number two icon. So now I've copied it up into that one. Same thing, I can make my adjustments. Get it close. If I wanted to make that look like a slightly warmer day, two choices. You can either warm up the white point or you can use the mids. The mids will affect skin tones. So you can get into the area of um, correcting where you've got dual light sources. You might have, you know, like someone standing next to a window is gonna have natural light from one side, artificial from the other. You can start to deal with that with that mid range. You can also use the white point, which is like pretty much like balancing a camera. So I can push the white point into the warm area. And you'll notice how it starts to, I don't know if you can see this, but it starts to pick up the colors in the background, like the buildings in the background. You can get a bit of the yellow out of them. And it doesn't affect the skin tones too much. Now you can go really extreme if you want. You could go all the way up here. Now, where that can be useful is to sort of get into the world of what I call the more creative grading, where someone says, oh yeah, but this has to match with a sunset shot. You know, we want to, this guy to look like it's afternoon, even though we had to shoot the guy in the morning. So here's a way of doing it. Here's a way of getting into an area where you can change the perception of the audience. You can make people believe that that was a sunset. Sunset's going to be a very warm colour in the white area because the, the white, anything white's going to reflect a hell of a lot more colour than any other colour will. So that's going to be the way you would do that. However, you can, uh, you can use a combination of the mids. They overlap. They're kind of like this overlapping between the way the mids and the hot, all these things work so that in combination you can juggle them. So for example, I can push that really warm and then go the exact opposite, 180 degrees opposite with the mids and you can start getting some sort of slightly surrealistic effects. When you've got camera balance problems, this is kind of the way to do it. Because camera balance problems generally mean that the sensor in the camera hasn't picked up some of the colors you're trying to get back. So you can go the opposite way. I can push the mids up into the warm area and then make the push the whites back out into a sort of neutral blue. So the whites are white. And I can pull the black level into a bit more into the blue to stop that overlap effect affecting the blacks. And then I can desaturate a little bit. And you know, you might want to use a look like that for a promo kind of look where it, it has to look or a, a play off into a break or just something a bit different. It allows you to get into a world of of sort of keeping the white and the black very neutral so there's a true white and a true black in the, the picture and then mess with the middle of it. So experimentation is a wonderful thing because you, know, you don't really know what the limits are. And My basic philosophy for anything to do with visual arts is to either be really subtle or to be way over the top because anything in the middle is kind of wishy-washy as far as I'm concerned. You know, I like really strong colour and strong effects but if you're not doing effects, then I reckon it should be subtle so that you kind of don't, as an audience, you just don't see it. You just absorb this program that's coming into your head and that the, the look of it just happens and you don't question it. You know, if you become aware of it, I think it's not right. If you start noticing these things when you're watching something, then it's kind of wrong. It's not, it's not connected to the content of the story. Wow, I better crack on a bit then. Okay. Um, there are a number of tools that will help you get through things very easily. Oh, yes, please. Question, do you ever use the eye drop book for the blacks and the mids to make the randomly work with stuff? Yes, yes, all, all the time. Um, you'll find in practice the white point is the one that you mess with the most simply because camera operators get that wrong more than anything else. 
because a lot of people, there are situations where the camera doesn't get white balanced. And so everything's a bit warm or everything's a bit cool and you've just got an eyedropper on things to fix them up. Um, the black one can be very useful because sometimes certain images are, can be a bit vague depending upon the content and you want to, you're not sure if there's a, a problem in the black. Um, so yes, the black one is a good one to use. Um, I'll just, I've got another, here we go. I've got some stuff here that is way more challenging than what we've been looking at. Um, this is a good, a good example of where I did use the eyedropper. And I'll just quickly take you through this. That's as it came out of the camera. That was the shot. This is from a fishing show, which happens every year on Channel 10. And it's all shot on these little HD cameras uh, in either standard definition or high definition. And they shoot over, well, it's 35 hours of footage per episode. So there's no time. These guys are just shooting on the fly the whole time. It's, it's reality. There's no time to set up. So you've got to deal with a lot of stuff. So this gives you an idea of the sort of thing you can do to it because it was a pretty shocking looking thing. Now you notice, first, first thing you notice is how the skin tones come back. Bang, now you can see faces. That's the key to connecting to an audience, is the eyes. Everyone looks at eyes, faces. That's the point of contact. So that's what you really need to work on first if you've got people in the shots. But um, let's go in here and I'll just take you through the process of dealing with something like this because you, there's kind of a, a procedure which, which makes it more efficient. The first thing I do is establish a white point. So I'll pull up a white point. Initially when I looked at this I thought, oh well that rooster tail, that plume of water coming out of the back of the engine is likely to be white. When I clicked on it, it didn't look that good. Then I'll pick up the sky. Or you could try and pick up this little bit of logo which looks like it's been printed in white. And you've got to try a few things to see what happens. And it looks like we've got close. It was an early morning. It was slightly yellowish in the sky. And you can see how far that's pulled the, pulled the whites out into the warm section. The next thing I'd be doing is trying to get some detail back in the mids. So I lift that a little bit because it was, it was crushed down towards the back a little too much. Now, so what I'm looking at here, and I'll just blow this up so you can see it. I'm looking at the faces. So when I'm working on this mid control, I'm looking at the faces and making sure we don't lift to the point where the blacks come up and we start to see noise. Because when you lift black levels, you'll start to see noise down in there. It's the, it's the one area where noise exists at its greatest level. So I'd go somewhere there. Now, something I've discovered that I think is an undocumented feature of um, this color corrector is when you lift that mid-range or crush that mid-range, this saturation slider seems to work with it. It's not documented anywhere, but I've gone through probably five years of grading this way and it seems to work. If you match the position of that, it seems to bring the saturation back to a natural level. So you can just automatically line that up so that those two are roughly the same distance and the amount of saturation in that image seems to be about right. 